Welcome, uh, TV Chapel. It's good to be together. Amen. As we gather together this morning, there's a few announcements I'd like to point out. Some things that are up and coming. A couple opportunities tomorrow. If you're a blood drive, blood giver, not blood driver. Uh, if you're a blood giver, uh, the, we have the uh, blood drive tomorrow from one to six down the Fellowship Hall. Uh, Red Cross will be here uh, receiving our our blood um, for those in need. So uh, that's an opportunity for you. Also tomorrow night at six thirty, right here in the sanctuary, we'll be having a a prayer service, so we invite you to come and, and join us in prayer tomorrow. You'll see the repair fair is coming up at the end of September, uh, September 30th. Bill Saltzgaber will be back, I think, from vacation soon, and he, he might have a word or two about that for you. There is youth group tonight uh, from 6 to 7.30, men's Bible studies, um, 8 a.m., and uh, 7 o'clock, and Lemon's Bible study tomorrow night at 7. You'll see the free hot meal, and then we have the Bobby Bar fundraiser uh, dinner. Uh, and if you have been thinking about wanting to volunteer um, for that, you want to take that? Why? You want to talk about that? <laughs> I was going. Am I on? Okay, good. Um, we still need a few, uh, we need about nine more gallons of baked beans, um, a couple of cakes, we need about uh, 25 more pies. I'm not a pie baker, but after this, Mr. Harmon gave me his pie recipe for um, the crust. I'm going to start making pies. Mr. Harmon's going to teach me how to make crust. And we need about five more gallons of vinegar. We need some more help in serving and busing tables. If you haven't signed up and you usually help, I'd appreciate it. We have a lot of auction items and our Unity Chapel quilters. Carol Leffler just gave me this beautiful quilt that's going on the auction. Is this this beautiful? So you can bid on this. They just put this together last week. Isn't this beautiful? We really appreciate it. So any help that you can give us, uh, we appreciate it. It's going to go for a good cause. And I, up to this point, I appreciate everybody that has helped and hope to see you um, Saturday. And we'll, we'll be selling tickets um, outside after church. Thank you. Okay, Joe, I'll let you take that up. No, I'm not preaching finish. today. I'm just going to let you finish it up. Uh, just look at the rest of the announcements in your bulletin and let us begin our time of worship this morning. God is good, amen. amen. The, uh, today, as you've noticed on the screens when you came in, that uh, Pastor Joe's going to be preaching about peace and how grace God, the, God's grace extends that peace to us. And, this morning in the first service, I challenged them with a question that said this. As we begin to worship and give God praise for who he is, where do you find your peace? In the hardest times or in the best times, where is your peaceful spot? So just let that start to resonate in your mind and in your hearts today as we hear the word of God delivered to us through worship. week. How about that? So uh, I think we're good. So uh, let's just take a breath and uh, let's stand and give God glory. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name.
Amen. 
As we continue our worship, we're going to give back to God through our tithes and our offerings. So if you prepare your hearts for that, just be blessed by the music that Sharon this morning. And her assistant. Y'all see her assistant up there? Amen. Let's give back to the Lord. <coughs>
as we uh, enter into our time of joys and, and prayer requests, Lord, this morning, are there names that you want to lift up, things you want to lift up, some joys that happened this week, anything wonderful? Okay. It was a joy that Norm Harrison won the football game. One of the silent time in that moment, but the prayers are being lifted up all over the place, right? Yes. And we are proud of our, our team for doing that, and their team, and, and we're thankful that the Charlestown player is, is, is a little bit better today yeah, than he was better. yesterday, hopefully. So we'll keep him in our prayers for sure. Others this morning? Yeah. Joanne has an unspoken prayer request. Unspoken prayer? Okay. Keep Alan in your prayers. So when I was there in Harrison County yesterday, he was going to be transferred to Audubon. And they got him there, and they're just waiting for those next steps. So keep Alan and Carol in your, in your prayers for sure. It's scary to hear you have something, and they're not sure what it is yet. So keep that in your prayers. Yes? Uh, remember Albert and Nancy Presilius. Albert, uh -huh. as of last night, he was moved to uh, Floyd County Bashes for yeah. further tests. Yeah, Albert also is in the same situation, was down in Harrison County yesterday, too, and, and they, he's moved on uh, a different situation, but he, 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 they're going to do some more testing for him, too, so keep Albert in your prayers as well. Others this morning? Yes? Glad to have Carolyn back with us this morning. Glad to have Carolyn back with us this morning? Yeah, Carolyn. Yeah. Hi. There you are. <laughs> Glad to have you back this morning. Good to see you. Others this morning? Well, if not, I'm going to give you time to go to the Lord in some silent prayer and, and thought, and then I will lead us in, with a of prayer, and we'll come together in the Lord's Prayer. Let's be in that time of prayer this morning.
gracious, loving God, Lord, we, uh, we pause this morning to give you glory. Lord, we think about the things in our lives, those things that are in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, in this moment, we give them to you. Lord, we've listed a, a we have a long list in our bulletin, and we've lifted up several by voice this morning, Lord, and, and knowing that you know the concerns and the needs, Lord, watch over each and every one of those uh, folks this morning. Now, watch over Albert and, and Alan as they're trying to figure out what's going on, the young man's from Charlestown as he recovers, or the overdosing that's going on in our community, Lord, or the unspoken prayer, Lord, Lord, we just uh, need you. Uh, look over uh, Delbert as well, Lord, this morning. Lord, we thank you for the ways that you move in our life, Lord. We, we, we want to put into your hands our cares, our concerns, and our worries, not knowing that, Lord, that, that your grace can provide us peace. So today, Lord, as we come as a church before you, Lord, we ask that your grace would be sufficient for us, that it sustains us, Lord, that it, it brings us peace, Lord, in these moments. Lord, we know we live in a broken world that's incomplete without you. Lord, we know that uh, we're in need of a Savior. So this morning, as we come this morning, may we feel your presence ever near. May the Holy Spirit dwell within us, and may we be changed forever for being in your presence. We give you glory this day and every day, and we pray as your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we leave us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Are you all today? Good. Okay, good. Um, if I ask you, if somebody said, give me a peace sign, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all do that, wouldn't we? Because that's what we've learned that the peace sign is, isn't it? Well, there's some people that um, need American Sign Language to talk with them because they don't speak. They can't speak. And so American Sign Language, I'm going to show you what their sign is for peace. And I want you to watch me because I'm going to have you do it too, okay? Right? Yeah. Right. Okay. 
Let's say a prayer. Sweet Jesus, we love you, and we know you love us. We thank you for the peace you give us, and we're always um, in your sight. Be with us as we go to Children's Church. And as we go home today, and give us peace when our worries get big. In your precious name, amen. Today our scripture text lesson comes from the book of John, chapter 11, verses 17 through 26. Now we're going to be jumping into the middle of a story uh, today, so I'll give you a hint. If you have a Bible and you have it open, just leave it open to all of chapter 11, and I'm going to bounce around in there this morning, okay? Hear these words uh, this morning. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been dead in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now you will give whatever is asked. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise at the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though they die, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into the world. The word of God for the people of God. As we hear those words proclaimed this morning, when we hear that witness of text, we hear about Jesus entering into a circumstance that had already happened. Have you ever had the opportunity to enter into something that's already going on? Uh, something that's in the midst of the moment? Jesus enters into this time with, with Martha. Uh, Lazarus had already passed, he had already been put in the tomb, everything was over, and except for the, the grieving. The folks were with Martha and Mary. They were doing what they should do, right? A good Jewish tradition was to hang with those that were grieving with them in the house, and they're waiting in this moment. They're waiting in this place. They're waiting in this turmoil of life. Have you ever had turmoil in your life? Everyone say yes. Because um, you've lived long enough. I know all of you lived long enough to have some turmoil, right? We've all lived long enough to experience some stuff. And we've been in this sermon series about grace, and it's been called Grace Under Fire. We were talking about the, the fiery kind of grace, right? We talked about that refiner's fire and all these things, and we were talking about God, that God's grace was with us and that God's grace is for us and that God's grace sustains us. And today I want to talk about God's grace gives us peace, right? God's grace can give us peace. And, and we've had these images up here. We've had images on the screen and on our bulletin fronts that are really raging kind of fires, right? They're kind of those fires that kind of rage in life. And we've all experienced those kinds of fires, right? Raging fires in our life. But how many of us think about the fires that bring us peace? Does anybody enjoy a nice campfire? Anyone enjoy that nice campfire? Anyone enjoy the water in a nice campfire? Anyone enjoy being out in nature where there's a campfire around? How many of you enjoy that? Just raise your hand. How many of you despise to raise your hand? It's always one or two in the whole room, right? Most of us can find some hope in there and some solace in there. There's some, some moments in there. For me, that brings me great peace. 
Uh, that would be like, if you told me that, that looks like that vacation photo for me, right? I'm outside doing something, relaxing in the presence of God. For me, that is a relaxing place. It, it's kind of that place that, that brings me some, some joy and some peace. How many of you like to, to eat snacks by the campfire? What's your favorite one? I hear s'mores? Marshmallows? Anybody like the good old roast, roasted hot dog over, over the campfire? Uh, just the joy of the cooking over the fire. Maybe you make some, so maybe you take it next level and make some soups over the fire. Maybe you're cooking over the fire. If you like that kind of thing, are you relaxing now? Put yourself out in there. Put yourself in that place. Just put yourself where it is. Maybe you're having some great conversations around the campfire. Have you ever had any of those? Maybe you're having some great storytelling. Anyone know a great storyteller in their life? that you, you can imagine sitting by the fire and hearing those stories. Maybe you're singing some music around the campfire. Whatever it is that you enjoy about that, and if this isn't your happy place, go find a new one. Whatever that happy place is, God is there to give us peace in those places. God wants us to find places in our life where we're not so amped up, right? God wants us to find places in our life where we can experience his peace and his joy because he gives peace in the moment. Now, Martha and Mary's story right now with Lazarus really doesn't bring them a whole lot of peace, right? They are grieving, and when you are grieving, you might not be at deep peace. Maybe you are, but maybe you aren't. In that moment, they may not have been at that peace. Now, now what they do say to Jesus, if you would have got here quicker... If you would have just been a little faster, Jesus, if you would have got here when we asked you to come originally, if you would have got here then, Jesus, you could have stopped this. But now, thanks for coming and showing your support to this grieving family. Thanks for coming, Jesus, now. But, you know, only, only, we know, Jesus, only if you could have got here sooner, you could have done something. See, Lazarus had been in the tomb and he'd been dead. For how many days did you catch? Four days. Did four days. In the, in, in the Jewish timeline, four days means you're dead dead. Like you're really dead. There's no hope kind of dead. You are super dead. You're deader than dead, right? You are gone. It's too long for anything to happen kind of dead. Right? That is where Lazarus is. Martha talks to Jesus and and he says, you know, your brother will rise again. And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know theology. I, I understand it, Jesus. I understand that he'll rise with everybody at the coming of the Lord. I get it. I got that, Jesus. And he says, okay, okay, I know you get it. Go get your sister. I want her to see me as well, right? Go get your sister. And, and, and she gets to encounter me as well. So when Mary hears that Jesus is here, when she hears that Jesus is here in this moment, Jesus had done something peculiar, by the way, uh, right before this at the beginning of the chapter. Here's what Jesus, when he originally gets the word uh, from, from Mary and Martha that Lazarus is, is ill, here's what he does. When Jesus hears this, Jesus says, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may glor be glorified through this. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed two more days. Jesus didn't immediately drop what he was doing. He stayed two more days. So that's the backdrop of it, right? That's the backdrop of the story. Martha just said, if you could have got here a year earlier, Jesus, if you would have just got here a little sooner, if you could have got here in this moment, that, 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 that it could have been different. And he says, remember this, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though they die, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? How many times does Jesus ask us, do we believe this in our life? Do you believe that I can do more than you think I can? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus is the God's son? Do you believe that Jesus is Raised from the tomb, do you believe that God has more in store for us than we could ever hope or imagine? Do we believe that? 
Or do we limit God in those moments? Do we live in doubt and unbelief? Because this is a moment where they're kind of not sure what's happening. And we, we have those moments in our life where we're not 100% sure what's going on. But they're living into the faith. But they think it's going to end up a different way than what Jesus is going to end up doing. Have you ever had one of those moments in your life? I remember a time in, in our life when our, we got rocked. And one of those moments where you... Where, where you're, you're knocked back a little in your faith. Have you ever had one of those moments? <laughs> it, it, it happens. Um, we have good days and we have bad days and we have days that surprise us. Amen? Have you had a day surprise you? When you got up in the moment, morning and you didn't expect what was going to happen by the end of the day. I got up one morning uh, the night before I had done a funeral. And we were going to insure the body the next morning. And we were in early in the morning because the family it was around Christmas time. The family had come home. They were down in Florida. They came back for the funeral. And they needed to catch a flight like at 10 in the morning. So we did. We were at the cemetery at like 5.30 in the morning. 5.30 in the morning in northern Indiana on a cold, blustery, windy day. And we're entering, and when I come home, my wife is in deep, just tears. Joel's just crying, holding Samuel in her arms. Now, Samuel's a little, you know how big Samuel is now, right? <laughs> He's this little guy that she could hold her hands, you imagine. So this was a long time ago. He was a toddler. And she said, you got to see him. I said, i got to see what? She goes, you got to see your son. I said, what's wrong with him? He had all these little red dots and spots over him, blood blisters on his lips, blood blisters on his hands in a couple places, and he, he's just he's just not real well. And Joel says, I don't know what to do. And I said, I don't know what to do either. I said, well, maybe we should go to the doctor's office. It's going to be opening pretty soon. So we drove down to our pediatrician's office and and they were about to open, so we went in. We took Joel. We took Joel. Oh, boy, I'm going to the hospital. We took Samuel in to, to be seen. And as Samuel was being seen, the doctor said, we're going to run some tests. We're going to run some blood tests. It's going to take an hour, about an hour, to get these blood tests. Go. Go and wait someplace. And we decided we were going to drive around. Because we thought that would be a good thing to calm our nerves and just drive around. And so we put little Samuel in his car seat. And, and we... We start driving around, and we come back exactly at one hour. We're going to be punctual in this. And when we get there, the, the lady at the desk, she says, oh, 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 he wants you to come right back, right back now. No, we're not waiting here, not waiting out here. We're going to take you back right away. And they don't take us to the exam room. They take us to the doctor's office. Not the exam room, but the doctor's office. And as we get taken to the doctor's office, there's all kinds of books. He's got a computer screen app with some stuff. He's got books open all over the place. And he goes, I just want you to know that your son has a blood disease. It's not cancer, but he's got a blood disease. And what I need you to do is immediately go to the hospital. Immediately go to the hospital so he can receive treatment. Immediately go to this place right now and don't go too far. And by the way, um, he's in a very dangerous state. If you're in an accident or something, he could bleed out. <laughs> and we've just been driving around for an hour. <laughs> go figure that. We go to the hospital and we're checking him in. And, and we're in, in this moment, right? We're in this moment. We're in this moment of chaos of life. We're in this moment of distress. We're in this really bad moment. I can't say I was much thinking about what to do with the Lord at that moment. I was just thinking about how we check in my son and all that. And in my back, like there's the door back there. My back's to the door of the hospital. And I feel like I should just kind of turn around and look. And all of a sudden, in the door comes one of my mentors, a mentor pastor, Herb Wingard. And, and he's coming in the hospital doors. <coughs> and I'm on staff with Herb. I'm the youth pastor at the time. And he's a visitation pastor. So... He sees me, I see him, and we kind of do one of those 
moments are kind of walking quickly to one another, kind of what I would imagine what that little run looks like. And, and Joelle's like there trying to check in and see if and I, I'm, I'm going to Herb and I'm, I said, Herb, what are you doing there? Who's, who's, who's here today at the hospital? He goes, I don't know. What are you doing here? And, and I said, well, Samuel's over here. He goes, well, I was just driving by the hospital and I felt a nudge from the Lord. And Shane Bishop will call it a ping. I, I felt a nudge from the Lord uh, to stop at the hospital. I have no idea why I'm here right now. And I said, I know 100% why you're here right now. And so he came and he prayed with Joel and myself and Samuel. And in that moment, in that moment, the peace that passes all understanding sat on my heart. In that moment, the Lord said, I'm here. I've been here all along, by the way, but I'm here in this very moment with you, and you're going to get through this, and, and, and it's going to be okay. Whatever it is, it's going to be okay. In that very moment of life, whatever is against you is going to be okay. Do you know that kind of peace in your life? Whatever it is that God's going to go get, I have to be reminded of that day after day after day that God is going to be with me in these moments that are challenging. God is going to go be with me in these moments that are hard, that God is going to be there because God is with us. God is for us. God sustains us and he wants to give us peace. He wants to give us peace and he wants to give peace to Martha and Mary in this moment. He doesn't want to leave him in this place where he's at. He doesn't want to leave him in this deep grief. Matter of fact, he's not going to leave him in grief at all. He's going to glorify God because he said he was earlier to the disciples. Remember the words he said to the disciples? This sickness will not end in death. We know at this point that something amazing is going to happen because we've been told that at the beginning up front. But they have no idea what's going on. So he meets up with Mary. And here's what happens. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was, saw him, she fell at his feet and she said, Lord, here it is again, huh? How many times do we say this to God? Lord, if you had only been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Lord, if you'd only been here when I wanted you to do this thing, it wouldn't have happened, right? And she said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came along with their also weeping, he was deeply, I love this, he was deeply moved and his spirit was troubled. See, Jesus wasn't insensitive to what was going on. Jesus was deeply moved and when he felt the trouble of the hearts of the people, he cared. He cared about what was going on, and he said, this was Jesus' question to him, where have you laid Lazarus? He asked, and she said, come, Lord, come with me, and, and you'll see, and then the shortest verse of the Bible, verse 11, 35, is, does anyone know what that is? Jesus, Jesus wept, yeah, Jesus wept. Jesus wept in that moment, and scholars debate why he was weeping. Is he weeping because he's sad about Lazarus? Why? Lazarus, is he weeping because he's sad that the people don't get what he can do? It could be a both and. It doesn't have to be either or, right? Life doesn't always have to be either or. It can be both and sometimes. Jesus is weeping with them. Jesus is weeping in this moment, and he knows what he's about to do. He's going to glorify his Father. He knows what's about to come. He knows that he's going to do something amazing that is going to bring them a new sense. But they're already in a sense of peace because Jesus is with them, right? Jesus is there, but Jesus says, hold on, hold on, let's go. So they go to the tomb. <coughs> Jesus said, um, what's this? But they, some of them said, couldn't he open the eyes of the blind man and kept this man from dying? Some people are like, hey, that's Jesus. Couldn't he have done something about this to the people in the crowd? And here's what Jesus does. Jesus moves deeply and he comes to the tomb in the cave in the entrance and he says, take the stone away. But Martha, the sister of the dead man, says, Jesus, you don't really mean that, right? But the time there is a bad odor, and he will be dead for four days, right? 
There's a stench that's going to happen, Jesus, if you open up. It's going to stink. Has anyone ever been around something that's been expired for a few days? Maybe a fish, uh, some roadkill by your house, maybe something that died in the wall of the church, and we finally got the smell away. It takes a while, right? There's a stench about it. They said, Jesus, don't you understand? If you do this, there's going to be a stench. He said, I don't care about the stench, right? I don't care. Let it stink. I don't care about the stink. Let it stink. Open the tomb. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would glorify God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you would always hear me. But I say this for the benefit of the people that are standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. See, Jesus knew that God would already do what God was going to do for him. But he said it to glorify the Father. In the presence of the people, he said, Lord, help me in this moment. And when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet are wrapped with the linens and the cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave cloths and let him go. Take off the grave cloths and let him go. It's going to be then this moment that Jesus has done something amazing and that people begin to see and believe at a new level. Sometimes it's hard when we can't see, Amen. Sometimes it's hard when doubt rules our hearts and things sometimes. And sometimes we let that move into something deeper. God's grace is there. It's always been about God's timing, never our timing. Did you know that? I've got a great timeline for God. Does anyone else have one? God do this, 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 and this by this day. We're all good. But God says, hold on. You, you'll see my glory, but you've got to hold on for a while. God's grace sometimes comes when we don't expect it. God's grace comes in those moments. And we always need to be given God the glory as Jesus did. God's grace is with us. God's grace is for us. It sustains us and it gives us peace. We sing about this sometimes. Uh, God's mercies are due every morning. Amen. How many like a new morning? A fresh start to the day. If yesterday wasn't so awesome, we get to start again, right? But we know that days are going to have ebbs and flows. We're going to have good things and bad things. We're going to have things that surprise us along the way. That's part of life. Accidents happen. Tragedies happen. Illness happens because we live in what? A fallen world. God, why did you let this happen? I'm not sure God always let it happen, but we live in a fallen world where it does happen. Right? God can bring us through our doubts. God can bring us from our unbelief. God can bring us in this. Sometimes the only thing we can do is pray. Right? Sometimes the only thing we can do in that moment is, is pray. So this morning, I want us to remember that God is with us. That God is for us. That God will sustain us. And that God is here to bring us peace. Let's pray this morning. Grace, loving God, Lord, today we come before you with the best thing we know how to do. Lord, that's to be in conversation with you. Lord, as we gather this morning, Lord, we ask your blessings upon this moment. We thank you for the ways that you move in our life, Lord. We thank you that you are here for us. We thank you, God, that you are with us. We thank you, God, that you give us a storehouse that sustains us, Lord. Lord, and we thank you that you're the God that provides peace that passes all understanding. Lord, this morning as we, as we come before you, Lord, we ask for that peace. The peace that sustains us and, and, and passes all understanding. Lord, I invite uh, us into that time of prayer.
this morning that's been sustained our whole week. We give you glory this day and every day in the sweetest name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. As we sing our closing song this morning, if you, if you want a little extra time with the Lord and feel you need a, a different or special place, we invite you to come to the altar. If you need someone to pray with you this morning, I'm, I'm available to pray with you or others will be as well. So let's stand and sing. <laughs>
And we sang those words today that God's faithfulness is great. May we be filled with the hope and the peace of the one whose grace is sufficient for us. God's grace is for us. God's grace is with us. God's grace can sustain us. And God's grace can bring us peace. May we leave with the peace that passes all understanding and all God's people said. Amen. Amen.